हेलो सर गुड इवनिंग हेलो पूर्वा हेलो नेहा हेलो सर गुड इवनिंग गुड इवनिंग हेलो रुकैया हेलो रिजवी हेलो सर हु वाज गुड इवनिंग सर गुड इवनिंग हु वाज द अदर गर्ल शी इज माय सिस्टर शी वाज बिकॉज़ शी वाज माय सिस्टर व्हेन नोटिस हाउ आई आस्क हाय सर गुड इवनिंग रिजवी मैं कैसे पूछता बेटा हिंदी में मैं कैसे बोलता कौन थी वो लड़की कौन थी कौन है नहीं वो लड़की कौन थी मेरी बहन <laughs> तो कंपैरिजन नहीं करते और कोई बात नहीं इंग्लिश भाषा को सिचुएशन में कंपैरिजन नहीं करते देखो ऐसे ही तो बोलते हैं तो वो कौन थी वो लड़की कौन थी सर मेरी बहन थी सर वो बोल दिया था क्या सर माय सिस्टर शी वाज माय सिस्टर सर देखा कितना आसान है कितना आसान है अगर आप सोचोगे तो लेकिन अगर आप नहीं सोचोगे तो बोलो प्रेजेंट में मेरी बहन है क्या करे ये टेक्निकल हो जाते हैं हम लोग जैसे आवाज निकलती है ना जो मुंह से उसके हिसाब से बोलना चाहिए जो मुंह से आवाज निकलने वाली है जो बात हम बोलने वाले उसके हिसाब से बोलना चाहिए सोचना बहुत ज्यादा जरूरी नहीं है कुछ जगहों पे। वेन यू आर स्टडिंग द इंग्लिश ग्रामर देन देर आर फ्यू टेंसेस जहां सोचने की जरूरत पड़ती है सच बताता हूँ समटाइम्स यू नीड टू थिंक अबाउट डिफरेंस बिटवीन द पास सिंपल एंड द प्रेजेंट परफेक्ट समटाइम्स समटाइम्स यू नीड टू थिंक अबाउट द प्रेजेंट परफेक्ट कंटिन्यूअस okay that's all after that say these two structures you don't need to think about the grammar yeah, i mean at, at least in terms of tense it's all about the situation it's very easy because in english tenses and hindi tenses match 100% except for these two ah yeah So let's get it started, people. Sanjeev is here as well. Look, yeah, you look like a kid. <laughs> when I saw you, I thought, I, who is this little kid? I mean, when I think of you, I think of you as a grown-up girl. But when I saw you today, I thought, who is this little kid? <laughs> you look like a kid to me, and I couldn't. Even noticed the other girl because I saw you so late. I thought, "Who is this girl giggling?" And then I suddenly realized it was you. Okay, friends. So here we are, uh, doing the storyteller thing. Mm -hmm. So the most interesting part is. First of all, the story, nine point eleven. We will listen to it one more time, and then the discussion. The discussion is what I'm looking forward to. There was this guy. He messaged me. He wanted to join the class. He found me on YouTube, so I sent him the you know uh, link to join the class for demo one day. You know, from outside Bihar, they don't know me, so why not at class? But then he somehow could not join. I sent him the recording of the class. Uh, sorry, the recording audio audio file, and I asked him to listen to it and do the questions. He didn't send me the answers, and then he requested. Three days passed, and he requested me to give him the link again to join the demo class. I didn't respond. This is the kind of people you get, and they want to improve their English. They don't want to put in efforts, and they want to improve their English. The guy had the exercise for four days with him, 
what what happens he sends me a message that i understand the audio you have sent but i can't answer the question i said what do you mean if i send this play this 9.11 and you claim that you understand 9.11 then why can't you answer these six questions in exercise six? What kind of logic is that? If you understand what you're listening to, why can't you answer why were the children disappointed at first? In what ways was Barkhawal behaved? Why can't you answer if you understand what you're listening to? So I told him that, listen, if you claim that you understand, you have to answer the question. That will give me an understanding of what your level is. Okay, sir, I'll try. I'll do my best. Fine. Four days, like I said, three days, four days passed. He did not bother to listen or send me the answers. And then he wants to be in the demo class. What for? What for? Now the demo class, as, as students need an opportunity to decide whether or not the class they are joining is good for them, I also need to decide whether the student I am going to have is good or not. Good in what way? Dedicated only. Willing to work. Willing to make an effort to learn. <laughs> no world, whether you, even if this, this guy, you know, the, the one I'm talking about, even if he goes and lives in England or America, he will have to make an effort to communicate with Americans. There are lots of Punjabis from India living in Canada and they have lived there for 10 years and they don't speak one sentence of English correctly. Why? They have spent all their time in Punjabi circles. They don't socialize with Canadians. They socialize only with Punjabis all the time. They work with Punjabis. They live with Punjabis. They visit uh, Punjabi parties. Punjabi people are in their friend circle. That's all. So they have small Punjabs in Canada. How will they improve their English? I have been, I've taught some of those students. I know their situation. So the first, yesterday, we were watching that video, remember? And I, the first thing was the law of motivation. If you're not motivated to learn a language, nobody can help you. You could live in America and can't learn English because you're not motivated to learn English. And then other rules come. So yesterday, I couldn't continue because of the uh, power failure. Um, I talked about it a little bit here in the group. Uh, I wrote, there are a couple of things they talk about in the video. Well, oh, too many things these guys have written here. Okay. Input-rich environment. All the time. Good evening, Either we are good evening sir. English. Good evening, Ravi. Either we are reading in English, we are listening to the English, rich, input rich environment. That is what facilitates language acquisition. If you do not have an input rich environment, you do not acquire the language. Learning and acquiring the language are two different things that the teacher in that video talks about. The difference between learning and acquiring. So people here come, they think they come here to learn English, but basically they sit here and acquire the English language. The second language acquisition rules work here. And now that we are having a conversation, you guys have full freedom to respond on the topic. That is, create situations for language production where you guys respond. I hope you guys understood what she was talking about. You don't need me to explain the same points. Now, 9.1, let's listen. Good language models are needed. What is a good language model? A teacher who does not use very faulty language. Two, a use of audio visuals as good role model, you know, language models. So the language that I'm going to play here today, the audio file that I'm going to play here today, won't it be considered a good language model? Who is speaking? Native speakers of English. So we listen to them and we get influenced by the way they speak. We have this at home as well, the audio file, to listen to it. Okay, 9.12. 
eleven, sorry. Nine point eleven, the young man's story. Once upon a time, a long time ago, there was a little girl called Bertha. Easy sentence, and everybody should be able to say this sentence without having to stress their memory. Right? A long time ago, there lived a girl called Bertha, who was very, very good. Who was very, very good. The children looked disappointed. The children looked disappointed. Disappointed is an adjective. Ed adjective you have studied. The boring, bored. Interesting, interested. The children looked disappointed. For them, this story was disappointing. The story was disappointing. And they felt disappointed. They looked disappointed. Okay. Can you give me the disappointed look? What's the point? Everybody's camera is off. Would I look, look at them all? All of them are sitting with their camera off. So do you want me to do the same thing that I did in other classes? Turn my camera off as well. Now, tit for tat. You turn your camera on to see me on camera. <laughs> you find it funny, Savaji? Okay, I like it. Okay, nobody bothers to see me. They are all happy. Not be, not. Mukherjee has turned his camera. The rest of them are happy with their camera off. If they can't see me, that's a, a poor one. So if majority turn their camera on, then the minority will be thrown out of the meeting. <laughs> I will remove them. <laughs> okay, <laughs> let's see. Come on. Apurva, Mukharram. Actually, and... sir, we are not we are not as handsome as you are. That's why. Mm. Okay, but nice joke. But go ahead, turn your camera on. I will. Mm. Everybody is sitting to study. I hope, right? Are you multitasking, anybody? No, sir. Just I'm drinking water. If anybody is multitasking, they could in, they could inform me. <laughs> Sabaji has her camera on, but I cannot see her, which is very interesting. She wants me to look at her. People. Am I teaching the window, Sabaji? <laughs> Am I teaching the window? <laughs> Guys, it's in your interest to keep your camera. I'm not able to see it, sir. It's in your interest to keep your cameras on. Okay. Give me a disappointed look. Look, I'm giving you a disappointed look because you're not turning your camera on. Okay. This is my disappointed look, guys. Okay. <laughs> This is my disappointed look. Now, the children looked disappointed because there was another story about a well-behaved child. Children start to feel some sort of, you know, frustration hearing about well-behaved children, well-behaved children all the time because it makes them think they are not good enough. Right? It makes them feel they are not good enough. When they're very young, they like that because they think they can measure up. When they're very young, like four, three, you know, and immature, not very sensible, then they think, because they don't understand the world at that age, they think, yeah, there is a good child in the story and I'm a good child too. So they relate to that character. But when they become nine, 10, 11, now they are no longer a good child because parents keep giving them negative feedback that you're not behaving yourself. You're not behaving well. Then when they hear a story about a good child, <laughs> they feel a little bit of competition rivalry there, you know. They had hoped for a better story. From they had hoped. They had hoped for a better story. From him. From she him. was always well behaved and worked hard at school. 
He was always well behaved. Another adjective, ed adjective. Yeah, you are a little late. <laughs> okay. He was. She was always well behaved. Another adjective, ed adjective. Well behaved children. Okay. She was always well behaved because she wanted to please her parents and teachers. Always did her homework, did did her best at school because she wanted to please her parents and, her and worked hard at school. She worked hard at school. Okay. Because she wanted to please her parents and teachers. She wanted to please her parents. She wanted to please her parents and teachers. Okay. When you are very small, you want a compliment. Oh, teacher gave me star. Or teacher gave me good. Okay. You want to please your teacher. That's your... It is electricity. Maybe plug in the other one. In the other hole. Yeah. Oh, who? The one who wants to please me? No, not at all. Not at all. I don't want somebody to please me. I mean, mo my students are not young kids, first of all. My students are grown-up people. But some of them still have the same tendency. They want to please me. Look, I understand sometimes why they do it. It's not that I get annoyed with, by their, their, this behavior. But sometimes when somebody overdoes it, when it starts to appear fake, then of course I don't like it. Otherwise, it's nice that they care about me. I feel good about it, that they care about how I feel. I would love to, to feel, to think that my daughter cares about me. I would love to think that you all care about me. If I inform you that I'm a little unwell and I'm not running the class and some of you feel, huh, he's not teaching me, then I would be disappointed. I would hope that you guys would say, okay, fine, he's unwell, let him rest a little. Tomorrow he will teach us, okay? So I would definitely expect my students to like me and to, you know, understand me and to have a positive opinion of me. But I wouldn't want them to go out of their way to please me. No, that would not make me happy. And that's why I say to you, when you sometimes agree with me, when you don't agree with me, actually, but you appear to agree with me, I get annoyed by you. And I say, stop it. And I say, grow a spine. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Some children, some children are like you know, always with, uh, with their teachers, agree with their teachers, no matter what the teacher says. They always agree with them. Okay. They are yes bosses. Okay. I don't like those people. <laughs> I don't like those people at all because their agreement, their approval doesn't mean anything. Somebody will be more powerful than me, and they will start to agree with that person. Because their agreement, their respect is not because of the fact that I'm right. It is because I am, in their opinion, the most powerful in the, in the situation. So somebody becomes more powerful than me and they will leave my side. And I don't want to be the most powerful anyway. So I want people's agreement because I hope that they agree with my point of view. They understand what I'm saying and they agree with the way I, I think, with my outlook. Outlook means point, point of view again. She was never late, never dirty or untidy. She was never late, never dirty or untidy. Well, again, these are qualities that are appreciated a lot when you are a child. Um, to a certain extent, these qualities are, uh, you know, admirable, you know. I mean, people do admire such qualities when somebody is not dirty, somebody is tidy. But... Overdoing these things can also become a bit annoying, no? There are people who, are, who overdo these things, quality of being clean and tidy, and they reach such an, such an extreme where they start to annoy you with this behavior, okay? For, 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 for in my case, definitely I'm not really so tidy. I'm not clean as far as clean is concerned. For outsiders, I'm clean. For my family members, maybe I'm not very clean. Sometimes I don't have a bath and... You know, I sit next to them to just to annoy them and stuff like that. But I think that's normal. I don't really like. I have always this, you know, uh, ear. And yes. some people criticize me yes. for this, and I can't do anything about it because, again, I don't care. Never rude, and she never told lies. And she never told lies. She was never rude. How can you never be rude? Sometimes you have to be because some people are so unreasonable that you can't be polite with them. At least the kind the kind of person I am, I, I don't think I can always be polite. 
You know, there are moments when you have to be rude, and I don't regret that. Was she pretty? <laughs> the little girl asked, "Was she pretty?" Asked the small girl. No. Asked the small girl, "Was she pretty?" Okay, these are three word sentences, but revision is so important. That video that I shared with you, one law of learning was law of repetition. When you know, when you are doing language learning. The old lessons must be revised. Now, maybe you guys will not go home to revise, but then you listen to this sentence. Was she pretty? And this is unit six elementary course. Isn't it good, good revision? Was she pretty? But the problem is sometimes even such simple sentences are ignored by some students. And that's when they pay the price later. Was she pretty? B for sentence. Was she pretty? Present, is she pretty? Future, will she be pretty? Will she be pretty? Be for will must be there. Will is for future, but the verb must be there. Will she be pretty? I think your daughter will be pretty, uh, Imrana. Her daughter will be pretty, yes. Her son will be handsome too because they are both good looking people, she and her husband. Not as pretty as you, the young man. Not as pretty as you. Again, you studied this two units before. You know, there were, I mean, we are in unit nine or 10. What? Nine. Nine. And in unit seven, we were talking about adjectives. Okay. So, not as pretty as you. And if Sanjeev doesn't notice this, doesn't think about it, then it is his personal failure. The course, the study material is giving him ample opportunity, enough opportunity to revise the lesson, not as pretty as you. Remember, you studied that? I'm as tall as you are? I'm not as tall as you are. You are taller than me. Not as pretty as you. The man made the girl happy. You are prettier. You are prettier than girl Bertha. And said, but she was horribly good. But she was horribly good. She was horribly good means very good here. She was, okay, everybody, please understand. Horribly good. Here, horribly good means what? She was extremely good. She was very, yeah, she was very extremely. good. That's what he wanted to say. But how did he say that? She was horribly, horribly good. good. Now, horrible means bad or good? Bad. Okay. Bad. And how did he frame this, you know, make this phrase? How did he put these words together? Horribly good. So, nor normally. He was horribly good. Okay. So, it was said to convey a certain message. It was said to convey a certain message. What message? Let me tell you, a few moments ago, I said being clean is a good quality. It is an admirable quality if somebody likes to be clean. If somebody is tidy, it's, a, it's an admi admirable quality. It's a quality we appreciate. But when somebody goes to an extreme, then these things become annoying, isn't it? Yeah, these things become a bit annoying. Then she was horribly good. It She was... Extremely good, so good that a lot of people felt how oh, could she was horribly good. Okay, so feel the meaning. Okay, beta, think about it. Beautifully written. Okay, beautifully designed. So here, yeah, designing is beautiful. Horribly written. Okay, now I'm saying horribly good. Bura tarika se good. Iska matlab kya hota hai? तो इसका अंदाजा लगाइए कि क्या बोला जा सकता है लिटरली तो आप फेल कर जाओगे क्योंकि हॉरिबल मतलब बैड एंड गुड मतलब अच्छा तो बुरा अच्छा कैसे होता है तो सोचो वो नहीं बोला जा रहा है जो हो नहीं सकता जो हो सकता है वो बोला जा रहा है क्या हो सकता है शी वाज सो गुड टू अ सच एन एक्सट्रीम शी वाज हॉरिबली गुड एंड दैट्स व्हाई द चिल्ड्रन वर यू गाइस आर लैंग्वेज लर्नर्स यू आर आल्सो इंट्रिग्ड बाय दैट फ्रेज हॉरिबली गुड and now the children for children children this was the mother tongue 
बट स्टिल दे लाइक दैट आइडिया वाई हॉर्बल को गुड के साथ यूज करना वॉज नॉट अ वेरी कॉमन थिंग द चिल्ड्रन वॉज सडनली इंटरेस्टेड द चिल्ड्रन वॉज सडनली इंटरेस्टेड वाई वर दे इंटरेस्टेड बिकॉज द मैन सडनली एसोसिएटेड बी गुड विद हॉर्बल इन हिज यूज ऑफ कैबरी ही सेट शी वॉज हॉर्बली गुड using the word horribly with good was unusual using the word horribly with good was unusual who does normally who normally says this oh uh, very good you say extremely good you say but horribly good i hope you understand okay now think about it awfully rich she is awfully rich kya matlab hua iska hai to bahut paisa lekin main kis tarah se bol raha hu usko She is awfully rich. Basically, awesome. imagination लगता है, ठीक है? Imagination लगता है ऐसे phrases बोलने के लिए और ऐसे सुनने से ही ये सब चीजें बनती हैं. जो अच्छा खाएगा उसी का तगड़ा सही होगा. तो input नहीं है तो अचानक से पहली दफा बड़े होने के बाद आता है तो लोग कपड़े लगते हो जाते हैं. They're all lost completely. कि क्या बोल गया? ऐसे ही सिर को जाते हैं इसकी तरह. ठीक है? यहाँ पर इसकी कमजोर he di- didn't get a very rich input environment growing up i'm sorry but this is the reality not for hindi not for english you let me explain what i mean you grew up in your family where they do not use a variety of hindi vocabulary am i right they use a certain number of words for almost all their conversation certain common words they use to convey all their ideas they do not use a lot of words in their conversation let's say how many times your father has used the word samvedanshil in front of you how many times anybody in your family has said the word sankuchit okay i'm just using some hindi words okay how many times have you heard these words from your family members option out so your family environment was not a rich input environment for your mother tongue i'm talking about then you went to school now at a school you were between hindi and english hanging uh, you couldn't really use english and they did not use much hindi uh, hindi they used was colloquial hindi again where was the rich input environment for you to develop your hindi language your mother tongue and this is not your problem alone this is the problem of majority of the students who go to sub standard private english medium school they get the worst of everything they don't get good hindi they don't get good english malnutrition in terms of language linguistic input malnutrition no input very little a few words all the time and unfortunately nobody encouraged you to read novels nobody encouraged you to read comics instead if you touched other books uh, other than your course books you were scolded that's i'm not talking about in, only you i'm talking about a lot of people in your position this is their story so when you try to learn a new language it it becomes a bit more challenging for people but you have been working hard so you have managed to do something that for most people will remain a dream you know having a, an understanding for the english language okay continue rich input environment jahan par khub input aata rahe usi se to samajh banti hai na agar tamil ki input aayi to tamil ban bolna seekhe hindi ki input aayi hindi bolna seekhe but usme richness hai ki nahi richness here means variety of words variety of structures were used I remember when Aditya was uh, three or four years old, he loved using a phrase, "Kash mere pas," and I, we used to find it very interesting because we don't normally don't say that in our conversation. And he would use it at least three, four times every day. Kash, okay, kash, and why? Because he watched cartoon shows in Hindi, and there the children, you know, cartoons, Bhim and Chota, Motu Patlu, and they use such language. He picked up. so watching tv you know can be good ex- good good, good uh, experience for children to grow their language especially when the parents do not use a variety of vocabulary or structures in their conversation 
if the parents have a limited you know use of the language they they do, do not use the language in such a broad way okay horribly good the children were now suddenly interested because the use of horribly with good was unusual it was not very common and they liked how true it sounded and they the children were suddenly interested using the word horribly with good was unusual and they liked how true it sounded and they liked how true it sounded <laughs> They liked how true it sounded. अच्छा तुम कोई भी एडजेक्टिव लेते हो जैसे मैं बोलूँ he spoke quietly तो quiet से उसका मीनिंग निकलता है ना कैसे बोला धीरे बोला he spoke loudly loudly loud से ही मीनिंग लेता हूँ कैसे बोला जोर से okay he spoke softly he spoke angrily तो आप समझ सकते हो ना imagine because of the adjective तो he said she was horribly good तो they liked how true it sounded why it was true for them because they thought kya being good is horrible they wanted to misbehave they wanted to do silly things they wanted to be naughty right the children were fed up being good all the time they were told to be good all the time and they de developed some sort of distaste for being good good they developed some sort of you know dislike for being good hota hai जैसे आपको हमेशा बोला जाए फलनमा तेज है फलनमा तेज है तो पढ़ाई से ही भाग जाते हो को नहीं पढ़ना बाहर भेजा चला कोई तेज है राइट यू यू गिव दैट रिएक्शन यू डेवलप सम सॉर्ट ऑफ डिस इंटरेस्ट इन स्टडीज बिकॉज यू आर बीइंग कंपेयर टू समबडी बीइंग सुपीरियर टू यू ऑल द टाइम एंड यू जस्ट कांट मेजर अप टू दम आपका उनसे हो ही नहीं पाता कि आप उनके लेवल पर पहुंचे तो आप सरेंडर करते हो गए नहीं छोड़ो यार इट हैपन्स ना इट्स अ नेचुरल रिएक्शन तो द चिल्ड्रेन है सेम वे अबाउट बींग गुड so they like this yeah she was horribly good bure tarike se achhi thi yani itni achhi thi buri thi wo achhi nahi thi wo horribly good bertha was so good that she'd won 3 medals for it bertha was so good that she had won she had won ab had won kyun aayega kyunki she was so good baat kare hum sita to usse piche hi tha so she had won 3 medals she was so good that she had won 3 medals she had won everybody right she'd won she'd won I means she had won okay she'd won three medals one said never late one said never late one said never late one said always polite one said always polite one said always polite one said always good and always polite and the third said best behaved child in town and the third said the best behaved child in town won three medals for it one said never late one said always polite and the third one said never late one said never late right and the other said always polite and the third said said best behaved child in town best behaved child in town best behaved child in town अच्छा देखो वेल बिहेव बेटर बिहेव बेस्ट बिहेव ओके सो बेस्ट बिहेव चाइल्ड इन टाउन उससे बेहतर कोई नहीं शहर में शी वाज द बेस्ट बिहेव चाइल्ड इन टाउन शी वोर देम एवरी डे एज शी वॉक्ड अराउंड टाउन एंड शी वोर देम एवरी डे व्हेन शी वॉक्ड अराउंड टाउन शी वोर देम एवरी डे एज शी वॉक्ड अराउंड टाउन शी वोर देम एवरी डे शी वोर दोस मेडल्स After all, if you got it, flaunt it. She won those medals, so she would wear them to show other people that look when she walked around town. Okay. So that everyone knew how good she was. So everyone knew how good she was because they know. Oh, never late. Oh, always polite. Oh, best behaved child in town. Oh, great. So everybody knew, and when everybody knew, the king also got to know. Horribly about. good. So everybody knew how good she was. horribly good cyril reminded him he reminded him cyril reminded him remind somebody to put it again in your mind remind to put it in your mind again remind in hindi yaad dilana dobara batana yaad dilana remind to put it in your mind again okay. you have an exam tomorrow i'm just reminding you like that 
Your mother reminds you to do your homework. Your mother reminds you to have your meal. She puts, puts it in your mind again. Hey, you remember? You have to do your homework like that. Okay? So she reminds you. Remind. To put it in your mind again. So Cyril reminded him. Horribly good. Yeah. Yes. yes. Well, the king had heard how good this girl was. The king had heard. The king had heard. The king had heard how good she was. Okay. And then what happened? And he invited Bertha to tea at the royal... He invited Bertha to tea. He invited Bertha to tea. Invite somebody to something. Invite somebody to tea. Invite somebody to dinner. Invite somebody to a party. Invite somebody to a wedding. Invite somebody to. And this to is an important preposition because people in who speak Hindi, they think on, they think in. That's the problem. But the right word is to. You don't invite somebody on birthday. Hindi mein bolte birthday pe invite karna. Okay? Lekin in English, we will say, invite me to your birthday party. I will come with a gift. Okay, like that. Uh, will you invite, uh, will I invite you guys to Holi? Yeah, sure, definitely. You're all welcome to play Holi. The only thing is I'll be absent. <laughs> you know, for me, Holi was the best fun always. But now I don't really enjoy it as much. Uh, my energy level has gone down a little, quite a lot, little actually. And um, another thing is I don't have my age friends, you know, friends of my age to play holy with. When you're playing holy with youngers, uh, people who are younger than you, then you have to be a little careful so that they don't get offended or hurt or, you know, you have to actually get a responsibility. When you are with your friends, there is no responsibility. If you tear somebody's shirt, it's all right. If somebody gets hurt a little bit in the process, it's all right. But imagine if I'm playing holy with young students of mine and somebody gets hurt, then how would I feel? People would raise questions on my maturity that he was there and this happened, isn't it? So you don't want that burden of responsibility. And that's why you simply don't want to participate. Now, the young kids that we have in our you know, school program, uh, they have challenged me and kind of, I have challenged them that you won't be able to color me. Tomorrow they are celebrating it. Okay. And I have challenged them that they won't be able to color me. I have planned to leave the house for, you know, for a few hours while they will be here. Or while they are here to be grammatically correct. While they are here. Or oh, even though we are talking about tomorrow, because after certain conjunctions, we don't use the future tense, will and all. While, as soon as, before, after, okay? After these conjunctions, you do not use the future. You have just studied, actually, in the same unit. Unit 9, you studied that. With before, after, as soon as, when, you know, while. Even though you're talking about future time, you do not use will. You stay with the present. 